Greetings, I'm Byron Wilkins. I run a freelance company called Tierra One Studios, and I also produced the webcomic 1977 The Comic. I've been asked by the fine folks at uh, Smith Micro to come here and chat with you, so let's get started. I got my start um, in drawing and in art at a very young age. Uh, at age 12 in 1969, I took my first art lesson at the Park District, and I told the teacher I wanted to draw like Charles Schultz. So I was quickly led to the art store and bought pencils and quill pens and India ink and Bristol board and started creating my own little comics. So in high school and college, I took art courses and actually drew comics for the newspapers, uh, the college newspapers. And uh, But I ended up working in video, oddly enough. Uh, I worked in the broadcast industry and then ran my own production company for a long time. And then I turned 50 in 2007. I said, you know what, it's time to come back to my uh, my true love of art and uh, created the comic webcomic 1977 and uh, been drawn ever since. Currently some of the trends I'm a big fan of are of course well webcomics because I draw one but also digital comics. I really enjoy the fact that I can go online um, buy a, a comic and read it right then. Um, maybe it's because I'm older and I have a family and I have a lot of uh, you know time constraints so it's easy for me to read online and I think that's great and it, and, and, and it allows me to read some stuff. Also re allows me to catch up on the whole story. Sometimes uh, stories will start in Superman and then go to Wonder Woman and then Justice League and sometimes at comic book stores they don't always have these in stock but you're on buying them online just buy the whole series and bam sit there and read them and I think that's great. Some of my biggest influences uh, for my own art style come from Hanna-Barbera cartoons. Um, I was a huge uh, fan of Saturday morning cartoons. Um, I wasn't really allowed to read comic books as a young man. Um, not sure why my parents were restrictive about that, that, but they allowed me to watch all the cartoons I wanted. So for five hours every Saturday morning, I was hooked on uh, cartoons. And Hanna-Barbera uh, cartoons like Johnny Quest, Space Ghost, uh, these types of comics, uh, cartoons, excuse me, really appealed to me. But uh, in the comic world, uh, people like Mort Drucker, Jack Davis from Mad Magazine are huge influences. And Don DiCarlo and uh, Harvey Kurtzman for pinups. Um, you can't beat Kurtzman's uh, Little Annie Fanny. My biggest challenge as an artist is, I think, the challenge that everybody faces is self-promotion. Um, you got to spend money to make money. And uh, when you're running your own business and when you're an artist, you're basically running your own business. You know, you have to advertise. And uh, you can, luckily today we have social media, but it can only do so much. And eventually you're going to have to go out and go to a convention or do comic book appearances, you know, appearances at comic book stores or at schools or something. And there's, you've got to get out and press the flesh and meet people and let people know what you're doing. That uh, is critical. And I think that's the basis of, a, of any success is letting people know, hey, this is what I do and here's where you can find me. I would have to say that I think my biggest uh, success is the Webcomic Alliance. Um, Don Griffin and I formed this back in 2010, and we got a great bunch of artists who help us write articles and produce a podcast geared at the entry-level uh, artist. Um, someone like myself who was just getting back into it, or the person just fresh out of college, or someone wanting to start their own webcomic online. They can come and listen to our podcasts and read our articles and know that uh, we're not necessarily the know-all experts, but we're here doing trial and errors with you, and we're passing along our information, our successes, and our failures. And I think that's a, a great thing about the webcomic, webcomic community is that we're a very open and sharing community, and I think that's essential for growth in our industry. If I could open up uh, my crystal ball and look and see where the industry is going to be in 10 years, uh, I'd probably be a billionaire. But I think the best thing I could say is that the big guns in the print industry have to realize that the digital comic market is not going to destroy them. Um, the movie industry thought that the, the development of VHS tapes was going to absolutely crush ticket sales, and it didn't. Uh, it actually helped improve their market a lot, and same thing with DVDs. Um, back in the 70s when audio cassettes came out and people could easily record music off the radio. They thought that's the end of albums. People are not going to buy uh, albums anymore. They're just going to record the music off the radio and that'll be it. Not true. Uh, you know, the record industry flourished. And they thought the same thing with CDs. They got these digital perfect copies of their albums, but you know, we still buy them. So I think the same thing with the digital uh, comic market is that you know, there's going to be a happy medium between the print and digital world. When I have to describe my, my job as an artist, um, the first thing that comes to mind is playtime. Because I get to draw all day. And I say that, you know, playtime tongue in cheek, but really uh, I'm drawing and I'm earning money. And I'm doing, and it's doing something I love. What more, you know, so it's like, what more can you ask for? 
And so whether, you know, whether you're an artist or you're whatever your career is, if you're truly doing something you love and you're earning money to do at the same time, you know, rock. The best advice I could give um, any new artist, uh, someone like myself or who started late or someone up and coming is never give up. Always draw. You, you, you've got to improve your craft. Um, you, there are days where it's like, you know, uh, no one's reading my comic or no one's paying attention to me. You feel like you're just, you know, invisible. It's not true. You're doing something to grow your talent and your abilities at the same time. Whether you have 10 readers or you have 100 readers or 10,000 readers, it doesn't matter. You're, the goal is, hey, I'm improving my art. I'm creating something and I'm getting out there and promoting it because no one is an overnight success. You look at anybody who quote unquote is an overnight success and there's years, sometimes decades of work to get them to where they were. And don't forget that, you know, it takes a lot of time paying your dues. When I started drawing again back in 2007, um, I of course pulled out the traditional tools, the pencils, the pens, ink and rulers and all this fun stuff. And then I went to scan it in because of course it's a digital comic. I want to produce, put it online. And, uh, you know, that was quite a bit of work for me, you know, maybe, you know, and I'm like, wow, there's got to be an easier way, a smoother workflow. And I discovered Magna Studio right away. I tried out a variety of packages, but Magna Studio to me felt the most natural. Um, it felt like I was actually drawing on paper. It, it just had the feel and look. And I thought, hey, this is great. And I've grown with Magna Studio over the years. And now that we've got Magna Studio 5, my entire workflow is done in, in one package. Uh, I used to color in Photoshop and do all the drawing in Magna Studio. Now I do it all in Magna Studio. It, I know at the beginning of the day when I have an assignment, and I need to open up and make an illustration. I know I can open up Magna Studio and I can go through the whole thing of penciling it, sending out a rough draft to my client, and then doing the inks and the coloring, the shading, and exporting it for print all right there in Magna Studio. And that just that's just a great feeling to know I don't have to fuss around with five different packages or scanning and all these different things. It's like, hey, it's right there. It makes it easy and smooth. And I can get it done. I can get more done. And that's, I think, the bottom line is it's helping my product productivity and I'm doing more. What else can you ask for? <laughs>